Tyler Matheson, thank you very much for the news update. Meanwhile, NVIDIA is making a somewhat unusual move, releasing a new AI audio generator today that they're calling Fugato. Deirdre Bosa joins us for today's Tech Check. And D, how does this move fit into the company's larger AI strategy? It's now a product and not just the infrastructure that goes into it. Exactly. It raises a lot of questions, which I'm going to get to. But first, I want to show you this thing. Fugato is the type of generative AI product that I can't just tell you about it. You have to actually listen to it yourself. This is what it spat out in the demo when the user prompted it to create a saxophone howling, barking, then electronic music with dogs barking. <laughs> So that is a strange but entirely new, never heard before sound that is meant to bring new synthetic capabilities to music, film, and games. If you want to try it for yourself, though, you're out of luck. NVIDIA has no plans to release this publicly, begging the question, why even do it in the first place? NVIDIA is not known as a consumer product company, and there are plenty of other things that it can focus on, like the rollout of Blackwell. Well, the answer is that moonshotty projects like Fugato and Project Shield in the early 2010s, they've helped NVIDIA stay relevant for decades and evolve into the hardware software AI powerhouse that it is today. The company has a long history of creating products that are meant to inspire its customers to create new products themselves or lay the groundwork for its own breakthroughs. Take DGX, that's its supercomputer in a box for AI tasks. It was actually created in part from learnings from a Shield streaming box. It would get NVIDIA familiar with supply chain management and software hardware integration, so critical to the modern day NVIDIA. Jensen Huang recently spoke about this on a podcast with the ARM CEO, Renai Haas. At the time, they say it was utterly unobvious that there was a market fit for this project field. It was my excuse to turn NVIDIA into a systems company. Yeah. And people will ask me, you know, the DGX1, which is the, the yeah. computer that changed everything. Right, right. Well, you know, how, how did that come about? Well, DGX1 is just a very large shield. The computer that changed everything started as a set-top stop. And now DGX, of course, is a cornerstone of the NVIDIA ecosystem. These moonshots, though, Dom, they do become a little bit more complicated in the age of generative AI because, of course, these models have to be trained on something, usually someone else's creation or IP that creates the potential for misuse. And this is something that NVIDIA acknowledges and says that's why there's no immediate plans to release it. But the point here, Dom, why we're even talking about this is that NVIDIA has this history of creating products. We don't even know what the end game is right now, but someone else could figure it out. NVIDIA itself could figure it out. But we are in the age of audio generative AI, and this is an interesting development. I mean, the, the balance sheet is there, right? We're talking about back and forth, the most valuable company, publicly traded company in the world, rivaling Apple, Alphabet. There used to be talk of all of these companies doing these moonshot type experiments. How much more moonshot-ish could we see NVIDIA become? And does it go just beyond generative audio AI? <laughs> they have something called the AI Playground, where they test and experiment with a lot of these projects. They have hundreds of researchers around the world whose purpose is to just play around and create these things and hopefully inspire ideas for other companies. Um, so I would say that we're likely to see a lot more. And it's interesting because no one really thinks of NVIDIA really as a consumer products company. But when I started digging into this, looking into the past, they had things like a hybrid gaming console that sort of laid the groundwork for the Nintendo Switch. Um, and it's this idea of an innovator, right, which is why NVIDIA is so successful now. It sees things decades in advance, not necessarily what the end product is going to be, but it tests things. And it has that in common with some of the other mega caps like Amazon and AWS, right? That started as an idea and has become a huge business for them. Just the ability and as you say, Dom, the balance sheet to be able to experiment. All right. Deirdre Bosa with the latest there on NVIDIA's AI ambitions and beyond. Thank you very much for that.